instructed to change the theme tune for, and we've changed the name, it's now Freeish Speech Fridays that we're doing on the platform to better reflect the current political environment as told to us by uh, the current government. Um, I do want to clarify the number to give money to Mike King. It's Boots. Text Boots, B-O-O-T-S, 2469. Um, so, yes, it's Freeish Speech Fridays if you're not a Nazi or a violent terrorist extremist. And I'm going to have to vet our two guests today to ensure that they're not violent extremists or possible terrorists by answer, asking them uh, a series of questions. But be, first, I better introduce them. Uh, joining us again is the terror of Taupo, Christine Rankin. She of the dangly earrings. How are you, Christine? Good morning. I'm <laughs> fine, thank you. And no, I am not a terrorist, although some people might see it that way. Yes, yes, we're gonna we're gonna find that out. And fresh, I think, from victory in the local body elections, returning to politics, former national cabinet minister Morris Williamson. How are you, mate? I'm uh, I'm in fear of what this test is going to be because I'm scared stiff of what the results might turn out. All right. Well, okay. Well, let's get into this because. You know, if you don't pass this test, I'm going to have to report you to the SIS because Rebecca Kitteridge and Kate Hannah tell me so. Are uh, either of you ever braided your hair? <laughs> no. No, Morris? Or oh, you braided your kids' mm. hair, Morris? Um, n no. No? no okay. okay, I'm going to go with a no. Okay. This, this is under oath, right? We're under well, oath. yeah, yeah, fundamentally. Well, it's all being recorded somewhere by the by the police state. Do either of you have views, like political views? Oh, oh no. I'm afraid. Yes, yes. You yes. do, Christine. Oh. Dodgy. Many, okay. Yes. You've got Many. views. Morris wouldn't no. have any. Of Are course, some of those views know. strong, Christine? Are some of those views strong? Yeah. None. None. You very, have no no views, strong. Morris. None at all. No, no political no, view. Never, never have. Never have. <laughs> okay. I'm do just you, wanting to make sure I don't get... Do I you sometimes get, argue with that. people you disagree with and feel that it's them and you and you're different, Morris? No, I, I learned very early on. I've been married 43 years and I learned I can never win an argument. <laughs> so I, I just don't have them. Christine, do you <laughs> sometimes... Christine, do you sometimes look at other people who don't think like you and think that's a them and us situation? Absolutely. Oh, you yes, do? Oh, regularly, gee. on a daily basis. I know All I'm right. in trouble, aren't I? Big Have trouble. either of you ever yes. knitted, ever knitted, or been interested in home renovation? <laughs> <laughs> what if you've done both? What if you've done both? <laughs> it's, a, it's not a trick question, just answers the questions. Christine, you ever knitted? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, yes, I've, I've tried, yes, okay. and I've you've... done home renovation, yes. And you've done... I'm, a... I'm in trouble. Morris, you've done I'll home renovation, top. haven't you? Come on, you can tell us the truth. Many, many times, many times. Many times. <laughs> Jesus, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's a white panel van pulling up there. <laughs> on the back, yeah? What's going well, on The here? other thing is that either, either of you, and I do notice this is going to cause an absolute rush on the SAS hotline, <laughs> it's friggin' Guy Fox tomorrow, so everyone's going to have explosives of one type or another. Oh, there you go. There <laughs> you Can go. I just say on my assessment as a unofficial consultant to the Star City Police State, Morris, I think you get away without being a terrorist. You, Christy Rankin, on the yes. other hand, the knitting, the having political opinions... Well, I'm, I'm concerned you are fun you might even be the the leader of some sort of terrorist uh, violent extremist cell. Do you realize that? Sean, I've been considered an enemy of the state for a long, long time. I'm used to it. Yeah, look, we laugh guys, we laugh guys, but wasn't that stuff? Um, when you put it together with the what was it the web of chaos documentary? Um, oh, oh and then the SIS coming out with the booklet on how to dob in your neighbour. i got to say, as much as we can laugh about it, if you didn't laugh, you'd cry, wouldn't you, Christine, at what they're doing? Oh, I, 
Look, I suppose I shouldn't say I can't believe it because it's the kind of environment that this government has created and I do think it's down to them. It's their rhetoric constantly. And when I got to the bit in the documentary where if you've got, you know, there are blonde-haired women who like to cook and, as you say, knit <laughs> and uh, like Pinterest and that they're racist and, it's, and they've got blonde-headed children, I wanted to be sick. I thought, oh, my God, we've gone mad. This is just really frightening. And no wonder people are desperate to speak up on how they feel and they're blocking it off more and more and more. It's very frightening. Yeah. I, I, I despair. It's actually very serious. And if something doesn't change next year, I don't know what's going to happen to us because this is the maddest I've ever seen us. Morris Williamson, sure, a left-wing commentator, said to me last night, even Muldoon wouldn't have pulled this SHIT. Do you agree? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I was no Muldoon fan, but he would have not had a bar of this. Sean, can I just one, add one little line in here? Because the number of times people retort back to me when I say things along this line, they say, look, if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. And I've <laughs> said, tell that to the people in the United States when Senator McCarthy was conducting witch hunts on every person that he didn't like that were driven to bankruptcy, driven to mental depression and even suicide because they had nothing, they'd done nothing, but he could make it such by the, the McCarthy witch hunts. So don't ever run the line if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear. It's a very serious issue. Yeah. Okay. Morris, how did it get to this point? I, I think it's just that the, the, the silent majority get on with their lives, don't think of this as being important, and, and it just grows like a little cancer until one day it's there in your face and you go, how did we ever get to this? And people need to be more vigilant and more careful. Look, I accept what the goal is that if there is extreme terrorists who are going to wreak violence and kill kids at a school with a big attack, then we, we don't want that and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen. But this idea of the, the extent to which this little bulletin or, you know, know what the signs are, I read it last night and I was in fits. I thought, this is just, this is insanity. Yep. Um, your past is coming back to haunt you, Christine. I've just got a text saying, the fashion police should be uh, called for Christine. That's mean and it's cruel. Look, I want to talk... And, uh, no, 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 you just wait. If they're going to say that, just remember I won Best Dressed Woman in New Zealand twice. They can get... Daft, okay, that was I'm that was that last jealousy. century though, Christine. Uh, it was last century. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I'm up there. I'm out there, boy. <laughs> All right, I, look, guys. I, I'm, I'm feeling left. I'm feeling. I'm feeling incredibly left out. I've never won best dressed woman. No, ever. no, but your <laughs> earrings aren't that good, Morris. From what I hear. Look, the <laughs> other thing I, I'm going to raise with you, I think in a functional democracy we would have had a news media that had called time on this lunacy quite some time ago. And I feel professionally or collectively for my vocation that we have utterly failed, utterly failed the New Zealand public in keeping an eye on this sort of strange behaviour. And I have looked at the almost fawning media coverage about the, intro the introduction of that SIS booklet this week with absolutely no idea of their role in protecting the public from the worst extremes that are possible from governments. Um, also, I note that I wasn't one of the invited journalists to the now cancelled secret briefing. But I do think this is indicative of the fact that our news media uh, have allowed this in some ways to happen without, you know, running up the distress signal, Christine. Oh, no, I totally, totally and absolutely agree with that. They have um, one line of thought and one line of support, as far as I can see, and they follow that adamantly. And, you know, Morris said that previously that um, people are busy with their lives and they just get on with it. I think it's more than that. People are afraid to speak out because they're going to be labelled. And this government has been really good at the labelling and the media are part of that labelling. So if you have a different view, you get a label that is ugly and nasty and people are afraid of that, but they are dying to have an open conversation. Um, everywhere I went in my campaign recently, people are desperate to talk about it, but they want want someone to do it on their behalf so they don't get that label. We're in a hell of a position in terms of that, and the media are a big part of that, in my opinion. Morris, do you agree? 
Well, I'm a big fan of trying to ensure that any issue that's being aired gets some balance. Yeah. And I've been going through column inches of media and taking any story I can find and going, right, so they've gone a big heavy on this as being the right way. Now, where's the other part of the story that is the alternative view that has concerns about it? And then you as a reader are intelligent enough to make a decision at the yeah. end of that article. But some of them, I'm sure, and I'm marking them off as we go. And I talked to a very senior businessman the other day who said to me, you know, I've just come to a conclusion. He said, I've been reading some articles about me and the, the company I'm running, and I know that the article is wrong. I know there is completely wrong bits in it. Mm. And then he said, I then go on to the other articles on that page, and I, and I read them as if they're all fact. And I suddenly realised one day, if the one that I know about me isn't, how many of these others aren't? And yeah. I keep looking, where's the balance? I read stuff in the Herald where they run a particular line and it gets to the end of the story and I say, well, that was great. I don't agree with it, but it was great. But where's the balance? Where's the controversial uh, other view being expressed so that people can make that judgment? And it's just not there. It's yeah. never there now. All right. All right, let's move on a little bit. And I don't think we need to mention the Web of Chaos documentary. I think we've had enough fun with that already, though it is a serious issue. Uh, also out, and we had an, an interview. I had an interview with Jim Palmer, who headed this Future of Local Government Review, set up by Nanaya Mahuta, that has come up with the brilliant idea that to improve democracy, we make it less democratic by having more, if you like, ethnic delineation in the deliberations of councils, and we just just give kids the vote, and that will fix everything. Um, and you've both been involved in local body politics or are involved in local body politics. i got to say, my personal view, it's a bunch of woke rubbish, but is there some valid points in this review, uh, Morris? Well, from my point of view, the, the, the real key things that need to be reviewed are getting a really clear definition of the role and functions of local government so that we take them back to what their real knitting given that we've been talking about yeah. that. They've got to stick to their knitting and do it. And the worst thing is uh, the, the guy that I beat here in the Howick Ward, he was putting stuff in the media about if he got re-elected to the council, he would be ensuring funding went uh, to the ram raiding victims and he was ensure funding went to some of the social housing... Not really, the business of local government. That, that's my point. Every one of the things he raised were very meritorious issues, but they were nothing to do with why local governments role in fact. They are central government. You pay your taxes so the police can be arresting ram raiders and the justice system and the youth justice system. And so we've got to stop this expansion of local government into a myriad of things that are not their core role and function. And any review, I think, should bring it back. On the area of uh, alternative representation other than the one person, one vote, uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not in favour of that. I think it should be a standard, everyone gets one vote and that should... But if it does want to change and you do want to have something like Maori wards, then I'm really, really opposed to a handful of councillors sitting at a table enabling that. It should go out to a referendum of the entire well population. Said. Of that, of that area, and that they make the decision to go to a Ma Maori wards, well, I'll live with that because that's democracy. But here in Auckland, about 11 councillors voted to go that way, and the whole general public, as far as I've been able to tell, uh, ascertain on the, on the campaign trail, are just not even close to in favour of such. Yeah. Uh, Christine, what did you think of the review? Look, I, I totally agree with Morris. There are changes that are required in local government, but mm. this is just another... Um, separatist agenda by this government and they're doing it all over the show, they've just done it in health and you know the health reforms are an absolute and utter chaos, I could tell you some things about that that would make your hair curl but, um, and look they're not going to be able to pull it off, that's the only thing that we can hold on to because I know that uh, National for example want to do a review too and they're much more sensible and balanced about it, this is just a takeover and a plan to have New Zealand the way they want it, which is not what New Zealanders want. It's just mm. another game. And when Nanaya is leading it, that makes me shudder. Now, why does that make you shudder, Christine? You tell me. Because, because she has a plan that is quite... I don't believe it's transparent at all, mm. and that is that is to change the democracy of our, democracy of well, our Willie Jackson, we're just tweaking. They're bit. just tweaking democracy, Christine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> no, we're just tweaking to worry about speech laws. 
We're just tweaking, uh, you know, national socialism. You've got to be talk, more talk. trusting. I've got a little bug I want to flick in here about the local body elections and so on. Uh, I saw a Fesso Collins this morning on TV saying he lost the mayoralty because of racism and people didn't oh. vote for him. Oh, God, colours. but that was Just, his whole what? campaign, was, wasn't wasn't it? No, but oh. hang on, hang on. I, I've, got, I've got some absolute facts that prove that wrong. Yep. If you go to the Manukau ward where the councillors standing, as well as him for mayor, mm. were actually Polynesian, people like Al Filipina mm. and another lady, Luli, they both scored phenomenally good votes in that ward, and mm. they're Pacific Islanders. They, they scored, Al Filipina got 6,000 more votes in the Manukau ward than Efeso got for mayor. Mm. So don't say that's a, in the Mangakiki ward, a lady who's Polynesian called Josephine Bartley, way out polled Efeso for numbers. So what a, I mean, those facts are that it isn't he didn't get the votes because of his Polynesian, because others standing in the same ward did get the votes. He didn't get it because people thought the other person was a better candidate. That's a really good point you make, actually, because he has had a tendency to be a cry bully on issues of race. And it's very interesting to hear a statistical analysis of that. Morris, I also saw a piece from journalist Todd Nile kind of suggesting that Wayne Brown didn't win the election because he didn't win out west and he didn't win in the south. Oh. Oh. And I just thought, no, no, he did win. <laughs> he no, is the no, mayor no, of no, all of no, no, there were three houses in Odahu that didn't vote for him, so therefore he didn't win. Yeah, no, it's, it's just nonsense. It's, 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 and, and then I got told, oh, he doesn't have a mandate. Well, he actually got a lot more votes. He won the election. Got, 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 got. That's, that's the mandate, that's isn't it, Christine? No, no. Isn't... No. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Oh, God, it's, there's another uh, white panel there. Now I've got three out here. <laughs> it just feeds into the game that they're playing at the moment. But, God, I hope we have the most wonderful debate during the next election. It's got to be good. Well, it's if we're allowed to. And Kerry Allen's come out and she said, well, last weekend she came and said, I'm going to have hate speech laws passed before the next election. I mean, A, I think that's just a politically dumb thing to do, but it's bloody chilling when we put it together with the Disinformation Project BS, the Web of Chaos documentary. And I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it does seem to me that there is an overall plan here because you don't get that much coincidence. You don't get a compliant mainstream taxpayer-funded uh, media. You don't get new organisations that are dodgy aligned to the Prime Minister's Department and our security apparatus saying the same things as the SIS who is issuing a How to Dob into Your Neighbour guide at the same time you have a Justice Minister saying we're going to have hate speech laws. You put that all together and that feels like an assault on the ability to have a fair, free, frank, open election without people being scared, Morris. Uh, absolutely right. Absolutely. Look, Sean, some people out there in the news media and others have said some absolutely ghastly stuff about me, and I will die in the ditch defending their right to say it. <laughs> that's just, that's how it should work. No, seriously. Yeah, fact, yeah, there's, I know, there's I hear a particular you. Guy, there's a particular guy in the Herald called Simon Wilson who writes <laughs> dreadful things about some of us. Comrade and, Wilson. I, and if he ever, and if he ever writes something, if he ever writes something nice about me, I'm going to sue him. Because I don't want him writing nice things about me. Yeah. Uh, am I wrong to think there is some sort of, if not plan, general intent here, um, Christine? Yeah, I, I absolutely believe there is, and I think it's part of. Um, I think it's part of the left's agenda. I think it's just the way they operate, and <clears throat> I know that when I was going through my worst times, um, Duncan Garner, for example, told me and has told me publicly on many, three occasions, I think, how he worked, walked out of TVNZ because when he did a balanced story about me, they went, no way, the Prime Minister's not going to accept no. this. No way. He yeah. picked up his no. bag and he left that job. So it's yeah. been going on for a long time. Yeah, pretty. He's now working for Today FM, who did an interview with Kate Hanna from the Disinformation Project this week. And the announcer, one T. O'Brien, a woman called O'Brien, finished the interview by saying, New Zealand needs more Kate Hannas. So I'm not <laughs> sure that Duncan's probably in ethically a particularly comfortable place right now as an announcer well, on, sure that talk, on that talkback channel. Just very quickly, uh, then I want to go horses for courses. 
Starship Hospital basically, even though they tried to post spin it, turned down five hundred thousand dollars or more in a donation because it comes from the racing industry. And then we find today or yesterday, last night, another ten thousand dollars from someone involved in the races racing industry. Is that woke madness or what, Christy? Oh, absolutely it is. Just ridiculous. They'll take lotto winnings as long as the lotto winnings have been given to an individual who then passes it on. How bloody ridiculous. It's like a bureaucratic nightmare. Don't agree with it at all. All Just right, Morris Williamson. At the end of the day, it's the kids. Uh, yeah. I couldn't have said it better than Christine. It's just, it's, look, Sean, if it's a legal activity that everyone's t- participating in, that we're trying to encourage, we want to grow the racing industry, thoroughbreds are selling for millions of dollars overseas and we're for creating jobs and so on, and somehow somebody got... Uh, look, it's just nonsense. But I want to give you a classic clip. You may remember this. I got elected uh, into Cabinet in 1990, and one of my first jobs was being told uh, that the previous legislation by Helen Clark as Minister of Health had banned the sponsorship of our cricket by the tobacco companies and we were about to host the World Cup cricket in 91. And so I had to bang an emergency piece of legislation through. It was really tough going, but we had the numbers in order to allow the Benson and Hedges cricket tournament to take place in New Zealand. Now, the alternative would have been all of those games that were played here in New Zealand would have just transferred across the Tasman and all been played. So New Zealanders would have still watched the cricket with Benson and Edge's signs around the, back, <laughs> around the ground. That would have had no change to their life, but we'd have lost all the economic... Uh, I think it. the it's fact good. that you've now identified as you, yourself as a merchant of death, Morris, means that <laughs> the next on, time we talk... These, I hope on, sorry, oh, these guys are... These guys are coming from... Yeah, the I, I'll tell you what, I hope okay. you both have phone, uh, phone calling privileges inside the gulag you that you're too, probably going to be locked up in. You may never hear from me again. Yeah. You may never hear from me again. <laughs> Uh, thank you both, Christine Rankin and Morris Williams. That was a fine, freest right. speech Friday in the new um, <laughs> Stasi state that we live in. Uh, Christine Rankin and Morris Williams are there. Oh, that was fun.